in today's session we will be discussing two fundamental concepts in mathematics one is the concept of sets a set is a well defined collection of objects so the main important thing about set is that given a set given an element we must be able to say without any doubt that whether that element belongs to that set or not some of the familiar sets that we will be using throughout our course is a set of all natural numbers which is equal to 1 2 3 etc uh, the set of all rationals the set of all integers of course the set of all real numbers etc now whenever we talk about uh, sets it is always a good idea to talk about the universal set of which the given set is a subset this is to avoid certain confusion regarding taking uh, some or performing certain operations on the sets suppose that a and b are both subsets of some universal set u now two sets allow us to perform two fundamental operations on these two sets the first operation is a union b which is again a subset of u consisting of elements of the form x where x is in a or x is in b remember that in mathematics or means that it can be in a it can be in b or it can be in both unlike in english language where most of the times or means that it has to be either a or it has to be in b it cannot be in both in the usual english sense but here it is not like that now the intersection of two sets is defined to be again a subset of u where x belongs to a now here it is a little bit more stronger and x belongs to b uh, another um, uh, operation that we can perform a uh, on a single set is known as complementation a complement in u is equal to the set of all x in u but x not in a here uh, the most important thing about uh, complement is that you have to be always careful about what universal set we are choosing for example uh, suppose that we are taking um, set of all suppose that we are taking a to be equal to 1 2 3 and suppose that u is equal to set of all natural numbers then in this case a complement is going to be nothing but 4 5 6 etc but suppose that you are choosing u equal to set of all integers then a complement is going to be equal to all negative integers 4 5 6 etc see the difference between these two in the first case we have taken a com we have uh, we got a complement to be equal to 4 5 6 etc second case we are getting a complement to be equal to minus 2 minus 1 therefore uh, the operation of taking complement uh, largely depends upon the universal set in which we are uh, considering that to be a subset of now uh, there is one um, if you have understood that the concept of taking intersection taking um, union etc there is a small exercise the exercise is the following if an is equal to n n plus 1 etc subset of natural numbers then the question is to find union n equal to 1 to infinity an and intersection n equal to 1 to infinity a we have to identify what these two sets are now we are moving towards the second fundamental concept functions for defining a function it is necessary that we must have two sets of course these two sets can be same one we call as the domain and the other one we call as the codomain so if a and b are two sets and if we want to define a function from a to b a function from a to b this is a, a rule which takes every each and every element in a and assigns an element in b therefore if we take an element a in a we will find an element which we denote by f of a in 
we there are many familiar functions for us for example suppose that we are defining or we can define from natural numbers to natural numbers f of n is equal to 2n this is a function from natural numbers to natural numbers now we can define uh, okay write it to be f1 now we can define f2 from integers to uh, integers by f2 of m equal to m square this is another function but uh, uh, it may actually give you these two examples may actually give you the impression that we have to always define function in terms of um, some formula in the first one we have a defined function in terms of a formula 2n uh, second one we defined again using some formula m square but that is not actually the case uh, one very interesting example is the following and that particular function is known as Dirichlet's function the definition is quite straightforward f from or g from r to r is the directly function defined by g of x is equal to 1 if x is a rational number 0 if x is not a rational number or x is a rational number uh, the interesting thing about uh, this function is that it's very easy to sketch the other two functions we just now defined but in this case uh, this function is going to be quite difficult and uh, quite confusing to actually plot on the plane because a lot of dots will be coming uh, in each and at near each and every point because we have already seen in uh, one of our previous classes that uh, the set of our rational numbers is quite dense and uh, therefore we may not be able to actually know that where we have to put this dot and where we should not put dot and um, another interesting thing about this function is that this function we cannot explain or describe in terms of any the form any such formula that we uh, saw in the previous examples another interesting function is the absolute value function again the absolute value function is again defined on the set of all real numbers it is defined like this absolute value of x or modulus of x sometimes we say is equal to x itself if x is greater than or equal to 0 and minus x if x less than 0 so for example modulus of minus 2.5 is going to be equal to minus of minus 2.5 that is equal to 2.5 itself and modulus of 3.1 is going to be equal to 3.1 itself so this is the definition of the absolute value function this absolute value function is one of the most important functions that we will be using in uh, real analysis class we will be next deriving an identity using the absolute value function the identity we promise to derive um, is known as triangle inequality from this phrase we can probably understand that it has something to do with triangle and it's going to be an inequality so uh, both these things are actually true we will make the statement first let a b belongs to r then modulus of a plus b is going to be less than or equal to modulus of a plus modulus of b so what we are claiming is the uh, the sum of a b then modulus taken is going to be always less than or equal to taking the modulus and then adding a and b so uh, for proving this we initially try to establish some other small identity we claim the following for a belongs to r if a belongs to r then we claim that a is going to be less than or equal to modulus of a we divide this into two cases what is the first case the first case is that a is greater than or equal to 0 but according to the definition of the absolute value function a greater than or equal to 0 then modulus of a is nothing but a itself therefore a equal to 
more or less of a less than or equal to more or less of a because uh, for the inequality less than or equal to to satisfy it can be even less or it can be even equal in this case it's equal therefore we have a less than or equal to more or less of a what is case 2 suppose now that we assume that a is case 2 we assume that a is less than 0 if a is less than 0 we know that modulus of a is going to be equal to minus a now we have a less than 0 but minus a is positive because if a is less than 0 we know that minus a is greater than 0 therefore this is less than minus a but this is equal to modulus of a so combining these two we get again that a is less than modulus of a but which we can write as a is less than or equal to modulus of a because for uh, the statement less than or equal to to satisfy it can be less or it can be equal to so we establish a less than or equal to modulus of a in both the cases next we are going to make use of uh, uh, this particular condition but even before that we will try to establish one more thing something on the same line minus a is also less than or equal to modulus of a this is uh, very easy to verify given uh, we have already established that a is less than or equal to mod a so remember that a is less than or equal to mod a we have already established so uh, put minus a in the place of a in 1 so what do we get minus a less than or equal to mod minus a but mod minus a is nothing but modulus of a itself therefore we establish this minus a less than or equal to modulus of a also now using these two identities it will be very easy to verify the triangle inequality we proceed to do that now okay we have to establish that we have to show that modulus of a plus b is less than or equal to modulus of a plus modulus of a plus modulus of b we again divide this into two cases case one we assume a plus b to be greater than or equal to zero in this case we have modulus of a plus b equal to a plus b itself but we know that a plus b a is less than or equal to modulus of a and b is less than or equal to modulus of b if we combine if you combine these two this one and this one we get our claim to be correct right now we move to the next case case 2 we have a plus b less than 0 if a plus b is less than 0 what is modulus of a plus b modulus of a plus b is minus of a plus b minus of a plus b is nothing but minus of a plus minus of b but we know that minus of a negative of a is always also less than or equal to modulus of a and this is less than or equal to modulus of b therefore in this case also we get modulus of a plus b less than or equal to modulus of a plus modulus of b therefore in both the cases a plus b negative or a plus b positive we establish the triangle inequality and therefore any a and b whatever the value of a plus b is we will get that modulus of a plus b is less than or equal to modulus of a plus modulus of b and we establish triangle inequality also